Friction is a necessary evil of engineering life. In any assembly with moving components, both friction and wear will tend to occur wherever two surfaces move against each other. In cutting a material, engineers have to take friction into account. This is what it can do. The drill fails. You can see the effects of friction almost everywhere. On touchdown, clouds of smoke shoot from the tyres of this jumbo jet. It's because of friction between the tyres and the runway. Sometimes we rely on friction. In a chuck, for instance. And it's only friction which holds the taper shank in place. So, if friction is sometimes the enemy of efficiency, it's also a phenomenon we can't do without. This car can't stop because friction between tyre and road has been reduced by a film of water. This simple experiment helps us to understand more about friction. A surface plate looks perfectly smooth and flat, but when we try to push it across a steel bench top, we encounter some resistance. We get a kind of stick-slip motion. If we could look at these two smooth surfaces under a microscope, we'd see something like this, a series of peaks and valleys. The peaks rub against each other as one surface moves over the other. We can separate these peaks by putting a thin film of oil between the two surfaces. And of course, the motion becomes easier. So, one way you can reduce friction is by using a lubricant. You can make the motion even easier by putting rollers between the surfaces. Now it's much easier to move the surface plate over the bench. Though without friction, the rollers would slide instead of turning. It's even easier if we use ball bearings. Now we can move the plate around over the workbench with very little resistance. Though once again, remember, it's friction that makes the ball bearings roll instead of slipping. Does friction depend on the types of material in contact? This cube has four different faces. Let's put a plastics material in contact with a mild steel surface. It takes very little force to move the cube because it's a low friction material called PTFE. What about mild steel? More weight means more friction. Now brass. Even more friction. And lastly, copper.
So friction depends on the types of material in contact. Whenever you try to move one surface over another, the force of friction will resist the motion. You have to apply enough effort to overcome that resistance. Obviously, you need more effort to shift a bigger load. But that's because the friction also increases if you apply any kind of downward force to the two surfaces. The bigger the load you apply, the larger the friction. And the more effort you need to overcome the resistance. Engineers make use of this basic principle all the time. For example, in work holding. By applying a large downward force to a clamp, you increase the friction between the work and the slideway, making it more difficult for the work to slip during cutting. The design of a car brake relies entirely upon friction. Early cars, like this 1919 Wolseley, used a simple shoe brake design. When you applied the brake, a high friction material was forced against the wheel to bring it to a halt. Modern designs are rather more complex, but the principle is basically the same. The disc brake unit is mounted against the hub of the front wheel with two pads of a high friction material inserted on either side of the disc. You can see the design more clearly on a diagram. When you apply the brakes, this high friction material is squeezed against the disc to stop both disc and wheel rotating. The harder the pads pinch the disc, the greater the friction. And this depends on how hard the driver presses the pedal. In this car, the force applied is measured on a dial. 400 units. This time, the driver will brake twice as hard. More force, more friction. Disengaging a clutch separates it from the engine flywheel so that the wheels are no longer driven. The clutch engages on the flywheel by means of high friction material on the back of the cone and transfers the drive from the engine to the prop shaft. A drive belt also relies on friction. Friction belts are used in a wide range of engineering situations to transfer power. When this belt is slack, the pulley on the left remains stationary. Adjust the tension and the drive is taken up because of friction between the pulleys and the belt. In work holding, it's again important to increase friction. You can do this by increasing the load on the work. With a surface grinder, you do this by using a magnetic force, as this demonstration shows. To show what happens without the magnetic force, we took the guard off and turned the wheel slowly by hand. Something you must never do. Though friction is sometimes useful, it's often a nuisance causing wear and inefficiency. For example, a car engine would seize up without oil. <laughs> 